So now that we've finished cleaning the top and bottom of the carburetor, as well as some of the smaller bits and pieces, I'm actually going to go ahead and set this off to the side. So this is a standard rebuild kit for an Edelbrock carburetor like this. I ordered this directly from Edelbrock. It's got a lot of bits and pieces bagged, so you can see the needles and seats, filters and gaskets are each in a bag, so we can set those off to the side. And you can go through, there's going to be extra parts in here, which is going to be really confusing, and it's something that got to me the first time that I rebuilt a carburetor. But the trick is to match up with the parts that you have and the parts that you took out. That's why I recommend removing the gaskets in as much of one piece as you can so you can match them up to what's in the kit. You also get a new base gasket. This is for the top cover. There is instructions in here with it. Sometimes these can be a little bit misleading because you need to make sure you're looking at the correct model, but a couple key adjustments that we'll look at later, as well as the accelerator pump, spring and cup, and then a couple vacuum plugs here, but uh, looks like we won't be needing those on our card. So I'll leave all of the parts that we're not going to use in this box I typically like to put them on a shelf just in case. If I come across a carb on another car or a friend's car, I might have just the piece that I need and I've already paid for them, no use in throwing them away. So I'll set this off to the side and we're gonna go through each bit and piece as we reassemble it on the carburetor. So we'll kind of keep everything off here and I'm actually gonna set the box on top of this one because you can see it got a little bent up in shipping and so I'm going to try and flatten that out a little bit without damaging it. So put just a little bit of weight, close it in a book, um, or lay it underneath a textbook, something like that would be perfect. So in starting reassembly, the first thing that I want to put back in is our jets. So these are the same ones that came out. We didn't get new ones with the kit. And I believe this is the correct size for the car that we're working on or for the engine that we're going to be placing this on. So I'm going to go ahead and reinstall those. You want to make sure you get it all the way down inside and lined up and not cross-threaded. So it takes a little bit of finagling. There, we've got it set down. And we'll use our screwdriver there. And I like to back it up just a little bit, kind of as far as I can, until the thread starts to skip a little bit, and then it'll drop right in and won't cross-thread. It's a good little tip to use throughout projects that you're working on. When in doubt, just go the opposite direction of the way you want to go, um, especially with strip fasteners or things like that, or something that's really stuck. If you tighten it down just a little bit, it'll often come out easier. So we'll drop the other jet in here. We use our screwdriver to line that one up and get it started. There it goes. You can see I'm using a small screwdriver to get it in there and just lightly tighten down. And then I'm using the larger screwdriver that has more contact to actually get it tight. Now I'm assembling this without any Loctite or any type of thread locker and that's the way that I prefer. I just don't like to have to worry about having some other compound inside the carburetor that might break up with fuel. Some people like to use Loctite and put the fasteners in, especially the jets, make sure things aren't moving around. Depending on your application and your comfort level with that, it might be something that works best for you. And next I'll be installing each of the Venturi clusters. And so we're going to put a new gasket on these and then go ahead and screw them in place stack of gaskets here and what I like to do is take all of the new gaskets and kind of pour them out off to the side so I have a little bit of a stack of new parts and then I can pick just the ones that I need because there's gonna be a selection and they're usually tangled up in the midst of something else and so I will size the gasket by going off the holes. Take that gasket and slide it over and make sure that all my holes are lined up in the correct places. So you can see there I've got 
all the holes where they need to be and none where they don't. So I can put my screws in and start them just lightly, right, Torx bit. So you can see I've got it started. That'll hold the gasket nice and tight as I set this in place. And then I'll snug one down and then bring the other snug as well. I want to make sure to tighten that gasket down nice and square so as to make sure to not warp any of the fittings. And it doesn't need a whole lot of torque. So really you just want to get them down nice and snug so the gasket's crushed evenly. But you don't really need to wrench down. I'd be worried if somebody was using a ratchet on something like this, even a quarter inch ratchet would really put too much torque on something like this. So we'll go ahead and duplicate on the other side and put our other Venturi gasket on. All right, so we've got our primaries installed there. The next thing I'm gonna do is the accelerator pump squirter here on the end. Now, we went ahead and we wrote down that the check ball goes in first and then the weight. So we'll actually go with the new check ball from our kit and drop that in first. And then it also came with a new weight as well. We'll drop that in second. And then we have the squirter itself with the new gasket. Make sure we install our gasket correctly. So we'll install our new accelerator pump gasket there. Slide that into place. I am switching out tips on the screwdriver as I switch parts and pieces, making sure to use the correct size for a given fitting. All right. Then I will go ahead and put the secondary Venturis in, but of course first is those weighted plates that sit in. Make sure going in properly and function as they should. We've got those there. And then our secondary Venturis. Again, we're matching up the gaskets. Making sure that fits as it should. Setting down into place. Remember, as we took them apart, they were a pretty tight fit, so we want to make sure we get that same tight fit with them. Double check and make sure that that still moves. So as I assemble everything, I'm also checking the function of it just to make sure that I can nip things in the bud as it gets assembled. If there's something that's binding, I can uh, deal with it right away rather than having to take items apart. Get that secondary settled right into place. Get both screws started. So now we have all four of our Venturis installed there. I'll go ahead and remove this accelerator pump spring over here on the side because our kit did come with a new one. So we'll go ahead and replace that spring, the updated one. So we'll drop that into place. The next thing I wanna go ahead and reinstall is our idle mixture screws or our idle air screws. 
So I labeled these when they came off so they are going into the same side. And the reason that is critical is because there is just a little bit of difference in the, each of the tips and how they're machined. And I wrote down the adjustments specific to each side. So we'll thread these in all the way until they lightly seat. And then we're going to back those out that one and a half turn or so to get them in the ballpark for getting this engine back up and running. So that's both of them lightly seated. And I'll reference my paper that I wrote down. So for each side here, so I have two and a half on this side, so that's one, two, and then a half, right about there. That's one, two, and a quarter. So just a little bit lighter there. And that should be right in the ballpark for getting that engine back up and running again. You will still have to adjust just a little bit to get it running nice and even on both sides and get it idling right where it should be. But again, this gets you in the ballpark right away. What I'll do is actually go ahead and set this lower half off to the side and we'll work on the top of the carburetor next. I'm going to go ahead and install the new needles and seats. You can see we've got our old ones here, but the kit came with completely new pieces. So we've got new gaskets, new seats, new needles, and also new filters that we're going to install. And you can see on the tips of these needles, this is something that we've come to do with reproduction parts. Many of them will have a Teflon tip or some type of rubberized tip. And that's to help deal with some of the small material that's going to come through the carburetor. The hope is that that tip will still seal even if there's small debris between that and the seat. Whereas an old school needle would be full brass all the way through or all metal. Um, and that would have trouble seating any amount of material between that and the seat would prevent it from sealing. Um, so something like this can improve uh, the carburetor. It gives it a little bit more uh, durability moving forward. So we'll install our small screen into the end of that seat. And depending on who you talk to, there is a handful of people out there that say to run without these screens, but I really prefer to run them. I think it's a, a good, I know it's the third form of third line of protection, uh, but you can really never be too safe with today's fuel filters being a little bit inconsistent and a lot of junk in today's gas. So it's just one more thing that's going to help keep your engine alive and keep this carburetor running for a long time. Next thing, I'll put the gasket on the bottom. It's nice and tight, so I'll thread it up. And then I can actually go ahead and leave that needle out. Set it off to the side. Set that seat in its place. And lightly get it started before tightening it down with a screwdriver. And just like removing it, you want to make sure that you use a screwdriver that has good purchase on both sides so that when that's tightened down, you're not deforming it um, or possibly ruining one edge of it. And then we can go ahead and drop the needle inside. And then we'll duplicate that same process over here on the other side. So make sure that that screen is still sealing when we get it installed. It can be a little bit of a pain to work in there, but that's the point is that that's going to act as a, a third line of defense. We'll get our gasket put on. Go ahead and thread it here in the other side. And then 
and drop the needle in for that side as well. So with our needles and seats in place, the next step that we're actually going to do is install the top cover gasket and make sure that everything lines up. So again, you'll want to make sure you have holes where you need them for the accelerator pump over here and also for all the holes around the exterior. And you can double check it against the old gasket. If you're unsure or if your kit came with multiple gaskets, you can double check and make sure that it lines up. This kit only came with one, so I know it's the correct one, but I still double check the holes just in case. So we'll go ahead and set that in place, and then we'll install the floats. So as you're installing the floats, you can see it's got a groove or a little bit of a spot worn in from where it sat on the needles. And so we'll want to make sure to put that side down as we install them. And the same here on this other side. So next I will want to go ahead and set the float height. Since you have a new needle and seat underneath the floats, it might be just that small amount, shorter or taller, and therefore will affect the float height. Doing this, you can use the included paper gauge that they have in the kit, but it's really not the most accurate method that I've found in the past. Something like this, you're kind of eyeballing from the side and trying to figure out if it's about right, and it can be really tough to get them spot on, and especially even between the two sides. What I really recommend to use is some type of drill bit. Now this is a spade bit, it's usually not what I like to use, but it's what I happen to have handy. What I recommend is just a standard wood bit, and a 7 16th shank here on the end. And that way you can just slide that right in between the gasket and the float, and you can tell if it's about right. And so you can see on this one that that floats just a little bit low because it's contacting that bit. So what I will do, as tempting as it is to just kind of wedge on the float on the needles and seats, you'll actually want to take it out and use a set of needle nose pliers or even just your hand if you have just a little bit of effort and bend it just a little bit there. You can see it didn't move much, but it most likely will be about right. It looks like that's going to be just about right. It's just touching here on the end. So I'll go ahead and duplicate the process on this other side. Making sure to hold the gasket nice and tight. Right there. So it looks like this one's low also. Looks like that's about right on there. It's just touching at the very end of the float. One last item to check after installing the floats and getting our float height set. We'll also want to check the float drop measurement. And this one's just as important. And you'll measure it by actually holding the top upside down and measuring from the gasket surface to the end of the float. What we're looking for here is a 15 16 measurement. And this is a situation where you can use the gauge they included to look and measure that one. So we're most likely. Do it again. There you go. So you can use the measuring tool that they include with that kit and hold it up to the gasket surface and ensure that it's set up correctly. So we're looking for a 15 16 measurement. Looks like this one might be just a little bit low. And so to adjust that, you will remove the float and adjust the tab here on the back side. Now, of course, you'll want to make sure to not bend its connection to the float or further along as that would adjust the float height. You want to make sure to only bend that tab. I recommend using just a small set of needle nose pliers to pull that in or out very gently. So with the float height being a little bit too low, what I'll do is grab onto that tang and then leverage against. Just bring that in ever so slightly. Then reinstall it and check again. 
Looks like I went a little bit too far there. It's just a little bit high. And it's measurements like this that really determine how the car runs and drives and if you're going to be happy with it when it's finished up. It looks like that's going to be just about right. Making sure that each of these items is set up correctly is really going to determine your perception of the car. So I always recommend taking the time right away to do it. And this side here, we're way off. So it moved it up, but not enough. Fifteen sixteenths right at the end of the float. So now we've got the top of the carburetor almost ready. There's one final piece that we need to work on and that is the accelerator pump. So as we look at this one, you can see here is the cup that seals to that lower housing. And these often deteriorate with age. You won't get a strong accelerator pump spray out of them. So you'll actually end up replacing this cup with a new one from the kit. So you'll kind of wedge it off going around each edge. So we've got that off. So here you can see our old accelerator pump with our new accelerator pump. You can even see where the old one has worn in, has lost a little bit of material and would be rubbing against the outside of that accelerator pump housing. Whereas our new one is going to be nice and tight. It's a little bit wider also. So it's going to make sure that this one lasts good long service life. So with putting this on, it's a little bit of just wedging it into place here on the top. So we've got that there. Make sure the rest of it still functions as it should. For if it would meet any resistance, if there was ever any material in place of the accelerator pump, it does have a spring that's a fail safe. Got that there. And we'll go ahead and place our accelerator pump lever on the side. For our next step, I'm going to go ahead and set the top of the carburetor off to the side and bring the base back into place. And on this one, there's an additional gasket here in the kit for the choke housing. So I will want to replace that one just in case, even though this one looks to be in fairly good shape. I'll go ahead and pull that choke apart. And of course, you'll always want to reference where that choke setting is in place. It looks like it's right about zeroed out. But of course, I'll write that down over on a sheet of paper so that when we reinstall this in just a moment, that we have it in the right spot. This does have just a little bit of spring pressure on it, so I'm going to hold it with my right hand as I remove these screws evenly so it doesn't shoot off out of place. So now with the choke removed, you can see the inner workings of it, and it's simply a thermostat coil. This thermostat coil is made of two dissimilar metals that expand and contract when the temperature changes. So that acts to engage the choke of the carburetor to close that one. So we'll go ahead and remove the old gasket. and You can see that one's actually had a good life to it. It's got a lot of dirt and grime, so we'll go ahead and throw that one away and replace it with the new one. And 
The kit also included new edge clamps as well that have just a little bit more spring tension to them. So we're going to go ahead and use those new edge clamps also as we reinstall the screws. So I'll just lightly tighten each of those three hold down clamps down. set those old hold down clamps off to the side there and we're actually going to go ahead and set the base here on top I want to carefully place the gasket on and then again make sure that the accelerator pump centers on its spring and then my gasket lines up on all the edges then I can go ahead and start each of the screws. And you'll notice I'm just getting these started right now. I'm not pulling in any of them down tight as I will tighten them down fairly slowly just to make sure that I don't distort the top of the carburetor as I pull them down. Now that I've got all of them in place, go ahead and lightly tighten them down, working my way around the carburetor. And then I will work around one final time and make sure they're all tightened evenly. The reason I'm going to make sure they're all tightened evenly is to make sure that gas gets crushed evenly also. And that will prevent any fuel leaks as fuel sloshes within the carburetor. The design of a carburetor like this means that this gasket should never have fuel sitting up against it. Uh, the float height is set in such a manner that the fuel stays below this gasket level. But in the event of hard cornering or a rough road, fuel will splash within the carburetor, so you still want to make sure that that has a good tight seal. Now that we've got all of that in place, one of our last two steps is to go ahead and rebuild and replace these metering rods. So we removed each metering rod and we'll be reusing those, but it did come with new springs. So we will replace those springs off to the side, put new ones on. Got stuck together there. Place the metering rod through and clip that spring on in place. We'll add the spring here underneath the metering rods and go ahead and place that one in. And I'm just going to double check that it still moves up and down freely, just as it should shouldn't meet any resistance as that metering rod is moving up and down in the jet. And I will replace its cover and the small Torx screw that goes on top. Duplicate the process here on the other side, so go ahead and remove that worn spring retainer. Place on a new one. Run our metering rod through. Making sure to get it inside that spring. That spring will still clip in place. There it is in place. You can see that that one's not going to fall out. spring underneath it and go ahead and drop it into place. You can see I'm checking to make sure it's got free movement as well in its jet. We'll go ahead and replace its cover. The 
The last step we have is replacing the two linkages that we removed on the exterior of the carburetor. So that's going to be our choke linkage here on this side, which we'll have, which it looks like we tucked off to the side. We'll go ahead and slide that choke linkage into place right there and replace its small clip with the correct size clip. These kits do come with multiple sizes of these small clips. You'll always want to make sure to use the correct one. So now we've got our choke hooked back up. You can see we have no binding in that side. Come over here to the other side and we need to hook up our accelerator pump linkage. This one. You can see that one hooks down underneath. There, so as that opens. And then that one has a clip on it as well. And this is the larger of the two. No binding there either. So after checking that there's no binding in any of the linkages, be that the choke or the accelerator, that concludes the rebuild of this Edelbrock carburetor. You always want to make sure to install a new fuel filter going to the carburetor to make sure that all of the work you've done cleaning that one up does last and that carburetor doesn't get filled with junk from the new fuel. Thank you for watching. Hope you found this video informative. If you like what you saw, please subscribe. If you'd like a detailed list of the parts used in this episode, please look in the description below.